You're listening to the Pool Proof Wisdom Podcast, where we bring our authentic selves, refuse to raise grown folks, and share wisdom you can use. With your host, Charles K. Pool. Good day, good people. Welcome to the podcast. We all think about escapism in the context of the lives that we hope to lead versus the lives that we're living. And often we dream about escape, escapism for the sake of having a better life, escapism to ensure that we are going to fulfill our potential. All of the things that we think about often are only that, thoughts and dreams. But today's guest decided that he was going to change his life for the better by making a move from everything that he had built and had known to try something new, someplace he'd never lived before, and in search of the life that he dreamed of. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Darren Sliman is an experienced publisher, creative director, marketer, business developer, photographer, videographer, producer, and journalist with more than 15 years in the creative field. Darren has assisted in building several successful media companies from the ground up. Now, many in the St. Louis area will know him because one of his most notable accomplishments is when he became publisher and creative director of the acclaimed LGBTQIA plus media group, Vital Voice and Max Magazine. Darren bolstered these brands' circulation to more than 150,000 monthly magazines distributed throughout the Midwest. He was also instrumental in growing the company's revenue to more than $1.2 million annually. No small feat for a specialized Midwest media outlet. Currently, Darren is the Vice President of Marketing for Edge Media Network, a national LGBTQ plus digital media platform. Over the past two years, Darren has been able to increase their audience from 5 million to 10.7 million annually with more plans to increase that number along the way. Darren's managerial skills allow him to lead any size organization with confidence, having managed teams of 20 or more people. And his many years of experience have also led to him developing relationships with many people that many of us know, like Bill and Hillary Clinton, Senator Claire McCaskill, Lady Gaga, Nelly, the Property Brothers, Andy Cohen, Tan France, Katy Perry, and many, many more. I met Darren when I was working at Anheuser-Busch and happened to come across him during many different events. And though we were not people who were necessarily known to each other, I was always impressed by his kindness, his authenticity, and the fact that he had a humor that was like no one else's. And when I've been observing him in the years past, seeing how he took control of his life, took charge of his life, and decided to live the life of his dreams inspired me, which is the reason that he is our guest today. You're going to love what Darren has to say, and I know I'm going to learn from it. Darren Sliman, good morning. Buenos dias, sir. How are you? Well, look at you in Mexico having a wonderful time, looking like new money and all that. I'm so glad you joined me this morning. How's it going so far this morning? Oh, it's a beautiful day in wonderful Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. A uh, little overcast today, but we like that during the summer because uh. it's so hot down here. So when we have overcast days, we're all really happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you just from a quick glance, Mexico agrees with you, my friend. And I agree with Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> well, How you know, it, it, it's, it's a wonderful testament to making an individual choice, whether someone may understand it or not, when you end up in a place where you can feel this way and express yourself in this way. And I want to talk a little bit about that because, you know, you and I met years ago. And one of the things I mentioned in the intro is that though we weren't always in each other's faces or what have you, like people tend to do in a city like this, we knew each other. And what I was struck by was that no matter what the circumstance, you were always kind, you were always funny as hell, funny, funny, and you always had a great sense of compassion for people whenever you dealt with them. And I have held on to that for years. And so we have been connected in that way for a lot of years now. 
And I watched and listened as you would make posts on Facebook and other social media, just kind of counting some of the things you were dealing with and challenges you were undergoing, and ultimately leading to you making the decision to change your life, to literally change it from everything that you had built, because you'd built a great deal here. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about your time in St. Louis and the things you did, because it was historic as far as I'm concerned. And the willingness to say, but I've done that, now it's time for something new, something that's going to help me live the life I want, and how you got there. So why don't you dive in a little bit about your time in St. Louis, and then tell me about the transition you began to make. Yeah, well, let me first state by, start by stating that I am first and foremost so thankful, so thankful to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I spent 25 years in St. Louis. Uh, I came there originally for college in theater, no less, hmm. um, but ended up becoming a, well, for lack of better words, a media mogul in St. Louis. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, <clears throat> working in every facet of media from television to radio to writing for local magazines and stuff to a point where I finally decided, well, I want to own some of this. So I created a magazine, uh, an LGBTQ magazine for the St. Louis region, which they, they had one, but it wasn't that good. So I, <laughs> I created one that was much more about entertainment, lifestyle, culture, art, excitement, and everything that the LGBT community can bring to a society and to a community. So that was very, very successful for me for 50 15 years. Right. I did that. I did Vital Voice for 15 years and uh, started from nothing at all and turned it into a multi million dollar company. Yeah. So I was really proud of everybody I worked with and all my clients, all my staff. And I was most proud of the stories we got to tell about the LGBT community in St. Louis specifically. And Charles, as you may know, I expanded Vital Voice to Kansas City as well. Right. So we, uh, we became a full statewide media publication, which was amazing to do. Yeah. And you know, you talk about change, and I think that was probably one of the first, I don't know, roadblocks, I guess, of change I ever came across when I decided I had been in St. Louis at that point for seven years and it was a successful product. And I, to move and change to a different city or start open up a new publication in a different city, even though I was in my same state, which made it easy for legal aspects, but, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, just going into a whole new market that I knew nothing about. Right, right. right. It was very scary. Yeah. But I think that was one of the first times I was challenged to make that type of change, which was mm -hmm. great. And you know what? I loved it. <laughs> yeah, you did. I find that so many people get scared of change. They want to change, but then they get scared. They're like, oh God, but I don't know about this and I don't know about that. Well, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but instead of getting scared by that, I get excited by that. Right, right, I get you. So I did that with Vital Voice for so many years and I'm very proud of the work I did there. But I will tell you, I think I'm a creature of evolution. And I've always challenged myself to evolve and change Throughout my whole life, I mean, I left home at 15. Mm. Uh, yeah, I left home real early when I was younger. I, and this was in the 80s. I was a young gay kid growing up in Oklahoma. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> but mind you, I left home with the blessing of my parents. My Understood. parents were phenomenal people. It wasn't mm -hmm. a negative right. aspect. It wasn't about oh, our gay kid, get out of here. No, they mm. were so, my family has always been so supportive of me, which has mm. been great. But they also knew I would probably not survive if I had mm. stayed in Oklahoma in the 80s right. as a, you know, mm. junior higher. Mm -hmm. um, so that was also another new thing for change, which was scary and frightening, but you power through. Mm. But this change, the most recent one I've made was getting rid of my media companies in St. Louis and packing up my, well, selling my house, selling my car, yeah. selling my stuff and packing up two suitcases and coming to Mexico. Huh. <laughs> I literally arrived with two suitcases. Wow. That's it. 
That's amazing. But I did this for a reason. I was coming up on my 50th birthday. Mm. And I'll never forget, uh, I was like 48. Yeah, 47, 48. And I was down here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico on vacation. And I was like, oh, this place is lovely. I really like it here. People are nice. Um, to be honest, living in Mexico is kind of like living in the 1990s <laughs> where things are just not as complicated. <laughs> but um, I find that I like that. I like mm. the less complication now in this new chapter of my life. Mm. And so, you know, I decided to make this change when I was about 47, 48. I still had my magazines. They were still rocking and rolling. Everything was great. But I truthfully was burnt out. I wasn't happy, mm -hmm. uh, those, especially the last five years mm -hmm. in uh, St. Louis. And it wasn't because of St. Louis. You know, it's a, like I said, I'm so thankful for St. Louis. But I did have a lot of really negative things happen to me the sure. last five years. And that's outside the pandemic. That's mm -hmm. a given. The pandemic is going to be the pandemic. Right. And that everybody was affected by that. Mm -hmm. But I also had some other things that were mm -hmm. going on in St. Louis that were very unique mm -hmm. to business, to media, to community. Right. Um, right. And it was a lot about like, I don't even know how to put this. As you mentioned, I've always been very friendly and nice mm -hmm. and helpful to people. But all of a sudden I had my own community kind of telling me like, how do I put this? Like, well, here, I want you to do this story about such and such or so-and-so. And I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, why? Well, because I said to. Well, mm. I'm sorry. I'm not, you're not my boss. Hmm. Well, it's your, this is the, the, I'll never forget this line. I literally had a person tell me one time when I told them, no, I can't cover that story. It's not hmm. really relevant to my audience. They literally said to me, it's your duty. Oh, really? Oh, really? It's my duty to do this for the hmm. community? Yet I've been doing it for 15 years, mm -hmm. supporting my community? Right. So I'll never forget that when, it, when, when actually a person told me that I literally at that point, I was like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like I have worked so hard for so long. And now yeah. the people I worked so hard and so long for are literally now so entitled that they think it's to, they think they have the right to tell me what my mm. duty right. is to the right. community. Right. 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 So 47, I decided to make this change. Like I said, I was down here on vacation. I'd always loved Puerto Vallarta. I've been coming here for 10 years for vacation every year. Always thought, oh, I'll retire there one day. And, you know, when I got rid of my companies during the pandemic, I literally did go into retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I had no job. I had no nothing. Mm -hmm. I was, of course, locked down in a, a condo in St. Louis right. with my wonderful dog. Uh, um, but... It was at that time I learned a lot about myself. Uh, when you are isolated by yourself for very long periods of time, you learn a lot about yourself. Absolutely. And what I learned during that time was that I was ready for a change. Mm. I knew I had pretty much exhausted everything I wanted to do in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that it was a bad thing. It was more about, I did this. This is great. But what's next? Mm. So since I had no job, I was in retirement, if you will. I was like, well, why don't I think about, you know, I always wanted to retire in Mexico. <laughs> um, but so I started at that time coming down here probably every three or four months, staying for a week or two. Mm. And I started looking for property. Now, it took me two years to find a place I wanted. Mm. And, but that two years also gave me the timeline I needed to research and understand what I was getting myself into. So I, you know, learning the different things, like how do you buy a place in Mexico? I don't know, you know, <laughs> um, you know, and we hear horror stories in the U S about Mexico. Oh, look out for the cartel. All right, right. Oh, look out for scams oh the pickpockets <laughs> i've experienced none of that uh -huh. not one bit of that yeah it's actually i'll never like it's just so funny that the the version of mexico in people's heads in the u.s is so off mm -hmm. of what this country is 
Mind you, yes, there are some bad things in Mexico. Duh. But there's like bad everywhere. things in the USA, exactly. too. Exactly. I'll never forget. In December, there was, like, some scuttlebutt with the cartel and the policia up north, like, maybe 40 miles away from mm-hmm. Puerto Vallarta. And all my Canadian neighbors were freaking out because there was gunshots. Oh. And they were they came to me like, dear, did you hear? Oh my God, gunshots were fired in a cartel policia like excursion. Oh and I was God. like, really, gunshots? They're like, yeah, one person shot a gun. I said, one. I come from St. Louis. We play a game every day. Is it fireworks or gunshots? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. It's very true. (laughs) So truth be told, St. Louis prepared me for any type of malice, like, you know, thing like that here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. It's all a perspective, right? Correct. It is a perspective. Very much so. But I tell you, you know, that two years, (laughs) and it did take a solid two years to figure out Mm -hmm. this. And I still didn't know everything. I just knew enough to get started, truthfully. Mm -hmm. But because it was two years, here's a funny little side story. Uh, um, Like I said, it did take me two years. And throughout that two years, I kept telling my friends and, you know, people I knew in St. Louis, I'm moving to Mexico. I'm moving to Mexico. I'm moving to Mexico. They didn't believe you necessarily. They did not. Uh, In fact, I will never forget a former assistant of mine. Mm who was not a very good employee, and I did have to end up firing many, many years prior. I ran into her at some bar in St. Louis in the Central West End, and I ran into her. I was like, oh, hi, girl. How you doing? She goes, oh, you. I thought you were moving to Mexico or something. And I went, I am. I wish you would hurry up and do it, because everybody talks about it. All you do is talk about it, and you're never going to go. Oh, come on. And I was like, and this is why I'm leaving St. Louis. Oh, my gosh. That is the perfect example of why. Right, right. Just unnecessary. Just unnecessary. The vile that I experienced the last five years in St. Louis, Mm -hmm. I would never want to put my worst enemy through. Let me ask you a question about that, Darren, before we go forward. Sure. A lot of times when people are in situations that are not healthy, that's what we're going to describe this as. It's not healthy. Yeah. Mentally, nope. spiritually, physically, it's not healthy. But we have this dynamic where we're taught, oh, come on, suck it up. It's not that bad. Come on, what's wrong with you? Talk to me somewhat about how you realize that you didn't need or want to suck it up because you were out here trying to protect your best interest in that mental, physical, and spiritual space. Tell me about that. Um, well, as I said, the, the lockdown and the pandemic really mm-hmm. did a number on me. and made me realize a lot of things. And it was that I had to, I had to build faith in myself because I'm not going to lie, Charles, I was knocked down mm. by people in St. Louis. Knocked wow. down. I had community members actively going to my clients and telling them not to advertise with me just because they didn't like me because I had to tell them no on something. Right. Right. So it was very hard for me and it really did a number on my mental stability, my faith, my happiness. And I, people that I did a lot of things for, I realized it was just for them and I was happy to do it, Mm -hmm. but they were never going to thank me for that. Mm -hmm. They were just going to take from me on it. Mm -hmm. So it was during the pandemic and during the lockdown that I really went through a lot mentally. And I realized, I was like, I'm just not happy at all. I'm not happy. Truth be told, I became a little bitchy, especially in the last year, because I was like, everyone's mean to me. Why can't I be mean to everybody else? Uh, Okay. You know, and I don't mean everybody, but I mean a large majority Mm -hmm. of people were. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, but I don't want to go down that road. Mm -hmm. I got to get back to my happiness, back to the happiness that I had when I first started Vital Voice. Mm -hmm. I wanted to feel that excitement of like, oh, I get to do something. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get to explore something that I've never done before. Right. 
And I'll never forget telling one of my, my best friend, Andrew Baumgartner, was like, truth be told, I just want to laugh again. Mm. I hadn't laughed like a real laugh, like genuine laugh in over two or three years, those last years in St. Wow. Louis. Wow. Hmm. And that broke my heart because I am a naturally happy, upbeat person. Yeah, you are. I can vouch for that. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is wrong. This is wrong and on all levels. And I will, again, it came back to the point, I'm not sure I will survive if mm -hmm. I stay here. Right. I would have fiscally survived, sure. My companies were rocking and rolling. But <laughs> would I personally be happy? No. Right. Not That's at all. Important. Yeah. I'm glad so you that made the, that, that distinction. The, yeah, that was the kicker. Yeah. And I do think that a lot of people will get themselves into a situation where you know, it, it, again, change is frightening, I've said before, but there's also a sense of complacency mm -hmm. with, well, but what will I do for money? What will right. I do for this? What will I do for that? Well, the truth be told, you won't know. Exactly. But that's a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. it could be something new. It could be something exciting and way better for you on your mm -hmm. life's mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. And that's what miraculously happened for Mexico for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. See, there you go. Whenever you mention it, you just light up like a true light bulb. And I am so happy to see that because, you know, the things that you've mentioned about knowing that you're not happy are things that many people are dealing with, right? It's hard for people to believe that they literally do have the power to change their circumstances. Now, I come from a tradition after a lot of self-examination and I I'm an introvert, so I spend a lot of time by myself to begin with. But I spent my entire life figuring out who the hell I am and what the <laughs> hell it is that I want. And when I'm in a circumstance where I know it's not working for me, I automatically, was it? I think it was Madonna who said it best. She says, you know, when I've taken everything that I can take from a situation and learned what I can learn, I move on. And you learned from St. Louis what you needed to move on. And that's now empowered you to have this life where that smile that's on your face is reflective of having not only taken your life back, but turning it on its head to such an extent that it's even more than you perhaps even expected. Is that a fair way of assessing it? That's 100% correct. In fact, it, it's funny. I was actually speaking with the current reigning Miss Gay America, Missouri, Akasha Royale drag queen in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And she just won that title in Missouri and she'll go on to compete in the Miss Gay America pageant. Uh, and I don't know when that is or where it's located, but she is our reigning drag queen of the state. Right. Mm -hmm. And she says on her, on all her outings and all her performances and stuff, when she's out as representing as the Miss Gay Missouri America, um, that Darren Sliman taught her that there comes a time in your life when it's time to pass the baton to the next generation. Uh. And that's actually how I felt about LGBTQIA media in St. Louis. I was ready for somebody to take over for me. I was no longer happy. I had actually groomed somebody to take over for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and continue on and let me go on about my way and let them, you know, reap the benefits and the rewards from creating the next generation of, of LGBTQIA media. Unfortunately, the person I trained and groomed to do that position also turned on me. <laughs> Okay, well. Um, so I was like, well, then screw it. Right, right. <laughs> I'm going anyhow. Right, you know? good, good and for you. you told in the, because uh, I closed, I closed Vital Voice down uh, December 31st, 2019. That was mm. the date that the Secretary of State closed my LLC. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, it was right before the pandemic. I didn't know the pandemic was even coming That's at that right. time, mm -hmm. but I knew at that time I was not going to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I was done serving the community. I was done serving St. Louis, but I was just like not doing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But I love, I've never been afraid to say my time is done. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Next generation, mm -hmm. take the torch and run. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. and the timing is, you know, I have a belief there and I, I tell many people this. You know, we live our lives with this expectation about when things are supposed to happen. 
and we, you know, think, well, I'm by this age, I'm supposed to do this, or by this time, this is supposed to happen. And I describe what I call as two different times that we have to become very familiar with. Whatever your faith or spirituality may be, I say that there is what we think is the appointed time. That's the stuff that we rush toward and say, oh, I've got to do this by this time. But God has what I call an anointed time. When everything comes together, that ensures that what is intended for you is going to happen. So when I'm hearing you say that you shut down your business in 2019 at the end of December, then 2020 rolls around, we have the pandemic, and you have all this time where you have to refigure who you are, what you want, what you believe in. I see that anointed time happening, my friend. This no yep. coincidences life where that happened exactly when it needed to happen so that you could move forward into the life you wanted. What's your yeah. take on that? I will tell you, I believe in that 100,000%. And it's actually, this, this move to Mexico has actually increased my own sense of spirituality, faith, and connection to whatever being may be, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whether it's, you know, a, a full on Christian God, Muslim God, it doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. I now have even a stronger belief in the anointed time, as you said, mm -hmm. because here's a funny side story, which I kind of mentioned to you before the show uh, via message. So I have a great story about buying my place. Yeah. Right? Okay. It solidifies faith. Mm. So a year before I found this place and moved here, I had given myself a certain budget. Let's say that budget was $500,000. That was going to be my budget to buy a new place to live permanently in Mexico. And I will never forget, I got into a, quite an argument with my father at that yeah. time. I was telling my family, hey, I'm going to move to Mexico. Um... Uh, so, and I'm going to give myself this budget. Oh, my dad lost it. He mm. went off on me about my budget. And he mm. was like, you're not going to spend a half a million dollars in Mexico. I forbid it. Uh. And I was like, but dad, it's not your money. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. He's like, the most I will let you spend is $250,000 on a condo. And I was like, of course, again, I'm at this point, I'm in my late 40s, and I'm thinking, the most you'll let me spend? <laughs> really, Dad? <laughs> it was okay. It was fine. I kind of, you know, my father at that time was like in his late, uh, late 70s, early 80s, and mm. so I just was like, I understand, Dad, no problem. I can understand mm. you, Daddy. It's all good. <laughs> Um, went on about my way and I continued on my search to find a place in Mexico. And I came down here, especially the last year. So 2022, I came down here probably five times in a year, mm -hmm. just working with my real estate agent, coming to look at property, look at areas, figure out where I want to be. I knew the areas I want to be. Sometimes my agent wouldn't show me things in my area. He kept trying to push me into another neighborhood that I didn't want to be in, but it's mm -hmm. more popular mm -hmm. and things like that. Anyhow, it was my very last trip down here that I had almost given up on finding a place I was going to be happy with. Mm -hmm. And it was, like I said, his last trip. And that trip, I had 13 properties set up to look at. And the very... Last property I walked into, I knew that was my place. Uh, oh, wait, I forgot a little important part about this okay. story. Let me backtrack. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bad okay. move. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, backtrack. Before I came down here on that last trip, my father passed away. Oh, yeah. I That's remember. kind of an important element to this story. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It was, it, was, it was his time, so I'm not upset about it. I was with him. It was great. Mm -hmm. So it, he had passed away. Mm -hmm. I then came down to Mexico to look for property. Da, 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 da. Finally mm -hmm. set up 13 units to look at on my final trip. Came into the very last appointment, the 13th appointment. And I walk in and I felt like, wow, this place is my place. This is mm -hmm. it. And so I asked the seller's agent what the price was. 
thousand dollars. Exactly. The exact amount mm -hmm. my father said. Ah, I love that, that. I knew at that moment that was my mm -hmm. dad speaking to me. That's right. From beyond, saying, mm -hmm. "Son, this is it." Mm -hmm. That's and awesome. in that appointment, I get on my phone and I'm texting my real estate agent who's standing next to me. I'm like, make the offer, make the mm -hmm. offer full, make the offer now. Let's do this. <laughs> I love that. So, you see what I mean? Like that I fact do. that my father and I had that argument. He passes <laughs> away. And the place I find was the exact mm -hmm. amount he wanted mm -hmm. me to spend was everything universal mm -hmm. coming together That's right. on that timeline that God wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I love that story. And I believe in all that I know that there are signs all around us all the time. We just are too stupid often to pay attention. But when we do, and you have that certainty that you have, my God, how does it change you from that day forward in terms of how you look at what happens in your life? That's a wonderful story. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. I remember when you found it because you were posting. I remember when you were selling your place here. Like I said, you know, for people who have had an impact, I always try to stay at least in connection with them. So you did go through a lot to get to the point where you found your place. But that is the beauty, isn't it? It was your place. Yeah. And isn't that just the way, though? That's the right. test. Mm -hmm. That's the test. The mm. test is, okay, you manifest and you go, I want this. Mm. God or the universe or whoever you believe in says, okay. And I mean that for anything, truth mm -hmm. be told. Mm -hmm. You can manifest anything you want in life. Mm. You say, I want this. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. you can have that. Mm. But I'm going to test you along the way to make sure that you no, first mm -hmm. really want this. Mm. If you have the where for all through the roadblocks, through the hurdles, mm -hmm. that means you really, really do want this and I will mm -hmm. provide it for you. Right, right, right. But right. you will be tested mm -hmm. on anything that you want as mm -hmm. you go through it. Mm -hmm. But if you will, if you withstand those universal tests, you will receive it, period. There you go. I there you feel go. that in my bones now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my bones, I feel that. Mm -hmm. Just like when I told my best friend back in St. Louis, in like 2020, I was like, I just want to laugh again. Mm. And Charles, I laugh pretty much every day now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, and yeah. it's the funny stuff. And it's the stuff that even bad stuff that happens to me here, which is never really bad, but like mm. it rains, electricity goes out. Yeah. Right. In the U.S., I've been like pissy. Mm -hmm. Why is electricity out? <laughs> when are they going to fix it? How long is it going to be off? Da -da 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 -da. Negative, 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 mm -hmm. negative. Right here, the electricity goes out. I kind of laugh and I go, ha -ha. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mexico! Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all. Yay, I get to watch Netflix on my phone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but by comparison, small potatoes, right? Yeah, right, exactly. And, and you know, but, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, no, you go ahead. We're talkers, go ahead, you go. No, I just, you know, that and that's the thing. It's like, I, I find even some friends I've met down here that face some real hard challenges in life, economic challenges and stuff. I find that if you, if you continue to dwell on it, instead of either a laugh at it or mm. work through those hurdles, you will stay in that misery. Mm -hmm. The more you put out that unhappiness or that negativity, the more it will come back on you mm -hmm. or to you. Mm -hmm. But the more you switch your own personal narrative in your head to even something that bad that happens, go, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. what next? <laughs> right, right. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. And you have a bit more of a positive outlook on that. Mm -hmm. It will come out positive for yeah. you. Yeah. And, and the perspective we hold. When I was a kid and we went through some stuff, which a lot of people know, I've written about mm -hmm. it, told the story. I mean, but we, we went through a period with my family where we couldn't even afford to be poor. We were just poor, <laughs> couldn't afford that extra O and R to be poor. And I remember, you know, the hardship of that, because obviously, you know, there are certain realities that you have to contend with, but the emotional toll it took on a young kid, 
who was trying to fit in at that time. You know, when you're going to the school and everybody knows that you're the kid that has no place to live, that's a big deal. Yeah. But I remember once something that my mother told me that stayed with me from that point to all these years later. And she told me, well, baby, this is where we are right now. But this isn't where we're always going to be. And if there's one thing mama wants you to know, it's that you are never your circumstances unless you choose to be, right? Correct. Correct. And you've changed your circumstances. The literal energy of your presence is different than it was in those last several years here. Yep. Your willingness to consider things with a different perspective has broadened. And you have become the embodiment of the you that you were always meant to be by making a choice to become the person that you knew you had the opportunity to become, right? Sure. And with that, I'd like you to talk to me about what that feels like when you realize that not only did you do this, but that you're constantly also doing it again and again every day, because it's not a one-stop shop. It's constantly developing. So how are you living into that every day now, Darren? Well, I, I'm a creature of research and intrigue. Always yeah. have been. Okay. That's why I've been in media. Even though I got a degree in theater over here, I went into media because I like telling the story. I think I went into right. theater because I like telling stories in right. general. Right. But I didn't want a scripted story. I wanted to find the story. Right. right? I wanted to find the solution. I wanted to find the people. Mm -hmm. But I have a new story to write. And to me, that's exciting. And don't get me wrong. Mexico definitely has its issues, mm -hmm. you know, like the electricity going out every time it rains, right? Mm -hmm. Because right. infrastructure here is not as good as it is in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, I've learned to evolve with that. And just like I said, just go, oh, Mexico, it's fine. It'll come back on eventually. Mm -hmm. I think there was one time I didn't have internet for three days, but, and in the U S that would have freaked me out here. I go, huh, I'll go have a margarita, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it, it has softened me and you are correct. I am so much happier now. And even my few remaining friends back in St. Louis that I speak to, or at least text message with every day. They've all said to me, they're like, we like Mexico, Darren. Mm. You're just like, okay, that's fine. Right. What are we doing next? Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. And that's inherently yeah. who you are. It really yeah. is. And, you know, the thing that I've also noticed, and I'm making speculation here, so I'll need you to confirm if what I think I'm observing is accurate. But when you're angry, whatever the circumstance, whatever the environment, a lot of it has to do with the sense of fear you have about where you're going and what your life means and what value you have. But when you surrender all of that and realize that what was doesn't have to be what will be, you lose that sense of fear. Is that fair to say that's what's happened for you? It's so fair, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I find that also with that is another word called control. Right. That I have always found the tighter you grasp of something to try to force it into what you want it to mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. the more it falls apart. Right. You have to let whatever it is you want come together for you instead of forcing it to. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta nudge it along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Gently. <laughs> Gently. But not because not everything's handed to you. You do gotta right. gently nudge it along. But I also find Fear comes from the fact that you cannot control something. Mm -hmm. I can't control the electricity going out every time it rains here, even if That's it's right. just a sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> Let go of that control. Let it go. Right. And that's right. one less stress on your head. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, especially the transition from St. Louis to Mexico was letting go of everything I did in St. Louis. Mm. And I think the reason I was the most unhappy, especially the last five years in St. Louis, was sure, yes, I was being hit by a lot of people that were pissy and mean to me, but I couldn't control that. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to. Mm -hmm. 
And what I do like to keep in mind, because we all have those people that as we look back on our lives, we're like, you know, you you did me wrong, right? You have your 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 moment if you're like quoting the color purple, the Sophia moment. All my life I had to fight, right? And you yes. know the people who have done you wrong. What I've learned over the years, because I have my list as well, those people are people I remember, but I don't let them live in my current experience, right? Because when you hold on to those who have done wrongly by you, the person who suffers is not them, right? So yeah. why am I going to let you take up residence in my head and in my spirit when all I'm going to say to you is instead, and this is surprising the hell out of a lot of people that I can do this, I say thank you because you taught me what I did not want, who I could not rely on, what I did have within me inherently despite what you tried to do. And without you, I wouldn't have learned that about myself. So thank yeah. you. Are you there yet? I am closer to it. Okay. I actually think about what you just said a lot. Because mm -hmm. yes, I have a list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of wrong words. I do. Yeah. Now I will tell you, even a year ago, my energy and angst and anger was, let's say, still at a 10 mm -hmm. about those people. Mm -hmm. It is now probably more at like a four. Okay. That's progress. Uh, yes. But I am also the first to admit it's not gone yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I still have that. Uh, there's still a piece of me that when I see their, those people's things come across social media that I go a little bit like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but I'm better at it. Mm -hmm. It used to be I would see their stuff come through social media and I would cry. Mm, okay. <laughs> but now it's more like, well. What I can and I will get there. I will get there. You will and get I, there. I want to get there. It's still the fresher for you too. It's still fresh yeah. for you. Yeah, I get it. And I, the but but the one thing I have faith in is that I will. You will get there. You will. And I say that because I have felt my own sense go from a ten to a four in the mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. with it. So I know it will get down. Mm -hmm. I think for me, like you asked, you say, thank you. Thank you for teaching me this about myself. I'm still trying to figure out what it is I was supposed to learn mm -hmm. from being so generous and so helpful to so many people that just completely turned on me the first time I had to say, eh, I can't do that. Mm. I get it. But Does I got something sense? for you. I do. And this oh, is good. something for you to think <laughs> yeah. about. Perhaps the question was, Remember we were talking earlier about you're going to be tested? When mm -hmm. you're looking at these types of circumstances where you're doing exactly what you said and you're being this person and they're being this person to you, perhaps the test is, I've made you this way for a very specific purpose. Are you going to let someone else change who I made you to be because of what they've done? Ooh. That's how I tend to look at things is whoever wrongs me, whoever writes me, inherently who I am should not change outside of the realm of who it is I'm intended to be. And I think that's part of what you may be dealing with because you've gotten back to the essential Darren as you've described it. And I think that's important. And when you're saying you're not completely over it yet, let me, let me be very clear. I'm certainly not sitting here trying to tell you I've reached a level of perfection, right? I describe myself and all of us are this way perfectly imperfect because yeah there are instances where you see people and you're just like i am going to keep this together because if i say what i want to say it's not going to be consistent with who i want to be right so that happens on occasion but what i've also learned is that like when you said you look out and you'll see something that they post and you go eh. well here's the upside of that when they look at what you post and you're this happy living this life they are pissed off and there's nothing that they can do about it. And I take a little bit of joy in knowing that. It was just like, how you like me now? You tried yeah. to break me, but look how I'm living now despite what you've done. So that's something yeah. to consider. That's, it's very true. That's yeah. so true. Oh my God. That's, that's, thank you for that. Thank yeah. you so much for mm -hmm. explaining that. 
Because I don't, I don't think of that. Truthfully, I don't think. Well, they probably also see what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. And you're doing plenty. And have a, yeah, and have an irk about that, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I, like I said, I know I'll get there. I will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like even my best friend Andrew came down to visit me in February, and he was asking me about some of the, my wrongdoers. Like if mm-hmm. they walked up to you, to us on the beach right now, what would you do? I would say. I said, well, I would say hello mm-hmm. and then ignore mm-hmm. because that's the only, that's where I'm at in my place right now. I could say hello and be cordial, but I don't want to chit chat. Well, you're doing more than I would do. <laughs> right? I mean, I'm honestly, like... if I could, if people do not know my personality in general, like, right. I would probably just ignore completely. Yeah, and be which like, is if they fine. Said hello to me, I'd be like. Because, because why play the game? You? You both right. know what's up. So why play the game of pretending that you don't know? There's an old saying that came out years ago. And, you know, fortunately, this is, you know, broadcast on satellite so you can curse because I do. But, you know, it's that idea that you can be mad. How that, how did it go? It went like this. It says, you know what? I'm not mad at you. I just don't fuck with you anymore. That's it. And that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. And you can be spiritual and faithful and all of that and still hold that belief. You can also have the belief and understanding that a lot of times it makes people mad when we're happy, when we're joyous. Because a lot of people I will run into say, why are you always in such a good mood? And I will quickly tell them, oh, I'm happy every day. Am I happy all day, every day? Yeah. Hell no. But every day I'm happy. However, if you ask me a question like that again, you may find out how quickly I will become unhappy. (laughs) So don't do that. And I think that when you live in possession of your own sense of self-awareness, when you are aggressively yourself, it can piss some people off because they've got their own tragedies and drama that they're dealing with. And they're mad because you found a way not to have to contend with that every day. So I'm celebrating, you know, Mexico Darren because- I celebrated him when he was St. Louis, Darren. And as I mm-hmm. said, you were well known here. And, you know, I would call you a celebrity. I know you probably wouldn't because you're a bit modest, but I did. And you didn't have to crack your lips to me once. You're like, who, who, who is that? You could have done that. But instead, yeah. you were as embracing and kind as anyone. And there are people in this town, as you know, who because they think their shit don't stink, won't crack their lips to say hello to you. Correct. I used to think about that when I was a young man, but now I'm just like, uh, you would be lucky that I would spend my time worrying about how you feel about me, right? So you free yourself by default, but it's your faith, it's your trust in having a purpose, and it's your certainty that you were not put on this planet, Darren, to live in misery and hopelessness. You were put here to thrive and to grow and to have an impact, not only as it relates to how you live your own life, but how that life reflected through the eyes of others inspires them to find something similar to what you're doing. That's what I see. Aw, you're so kind. No, not really, (laughs) but you know that too. I just like to be very fair and honest with what I see because we live in a world where symbolism is out of control. And I like the real deal when it comes to people. I would rather have someone walk up and tell me if they hate my guts than grin in my face and then talk behind my back. Because I can deal more readily with knowing exactly how you feel than having to always wonder about it. I have a question that I want to kind of look at as we get ready to close out here. You know, and it's an important one. I'll preface it by saying that who we become ultimately is usually someone we didn't know that we could be based up on some particular point in our life when things change for us. Mine was when I was a 10 year old kid, had no place to live, wanted to only make sure that by the time that, you know, I got to be an adult that my mother didn't have to go through any of the drama and issues and suffering that she did. And that did, thank God, come to pass. But I was 10 years old at that time. When I look at my life today and the decisions I make, the judgments and the choices that I am contending with, I'm still that 10-year-old kid who has only one thing that I ever really wanted was to make sure that we were out of that situation and that my mom never had to ask anyone for anything else again. So anything that's happened since then has been gravy. 
So with that as my rationale for who I am, who is Darren Sliman today and where is he going based upon what he knows has already come to pass? So I thought a little bit about this just sitting on my patio. <laughs> okay. It's kind of like, because I did, I made this change. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, now why? Mm. Now I, and I think about that. And I think about what, what is the core of me? What do I provide for humanity? What do I provide for community, life, happiness? What do I do? Now, I know what I did with St. Louis. That mm -hmm. was fine. I literally helped change the entire livelihoods and well-being of every LGBTQIA person in the state of Missouri. Good. I've already made a huge impact on mm -hmm. this planet to millions of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bueno. Bravo for me. Yay. Mm -hmm. But now what? All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And I think about that often. I mean, as I'm sure you mentioned in my intro, I, my current position is I'm vice president of marketing for Edge Media Network. So I was very fortunate that the owner of Edge Media Network actually found me through the pandemic and was like, hey, I read that you like got rid of your companies. What are you doing? Mm. And I literally, I remember replying back to him going, I'm going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do. I don't know what's going on in life. I'm just, this is awful. So he goes, don't worry, I have a job for you. And he put me in position to run his company. Now, Edge Media is a national LGBTQIA media mm -hmm. platform, one of the most successful. We have an audience of over 10 million people, which is great. Um, I am still making headways and still serving that narrative of the LGBT community, but not from an activist side, but mostly, and which I've always believed, Showing the good side of our community, right. because the one belief I have found, especially during my tenure at Vital Voice and in St. Louis, is you never change other people's hearts and minds by demand. Mm -hmm. You can't go on a protest, march up and down a street, fist in the air, demanding your rights. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is you have to find something. I don't even care if it's like my opponent and I both like the color blue, that's something that makes you a common bond. Mm -hmm. So my job with the LGBTQIA community and telling those stories is to showcase everything cool and wonderful about the mm -hmm. community, not the bad, mm -hmm. not the angry, not the bitching, mm -hmm. not the give me and demand, but more so like, oh, here's XYZ person that so many people like and love and they mm -hmm. like, like, let's take, former uh, CEO and president of the board of Pulaski Bank. Mm -hmm. was a gay man for years, no one knew it, finally mm -hmm. came out after he took his company and put it on the, the stock market. Then he came out as a gay man. Mm -hmm. And it was such a privilege to tell his story because it was like, here's this awesome man who has become very successful in St. Louis and oh, by the way, he's gay. There you go. People already knew him, but they didn't know he was gay. Did mm -hmm. it change their opinion on him? Mm -hmm. Sure, for some, mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. but not really for others. He right. actually changed people's hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. When you can convince your opponent or whoever you're trying to do to say, hey, I'm just like you. We both like the color blue. Let's start from there and find other things we like about each other. Right. We don't right. have to like everything. Mm -hmm. But I feel today everyone is like, you have to be this or this. That's right. That's it. Mm -hmm. I've always been an, a, a um, proponent for finding this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that said, you have to really, really, really kind of be the person you want to be instead of just being the negative and being stuck in that, that vitriol cycle of, mm -hmm. oh, woe is me, number one. Right. And number two is the fright of changing it. Right. You got to get over that. But my boss, even my boss says now, he goes, because he knew me before I moved to Mexico when I was still in bitchy Darren mode. <laughs> now he, even he too goes, I like Mexico, Darren. You're just like, ah, it'll happen. <laughs> now, I am fortunate that I still do have a, a wonderful job that I love right. at Edge Media right. Network. And, it, you know, I work remotely. So that was a blessing mm -hmm. as well. I knew I wasn't going to move to Boston, which is where our headquarters are. Mm -hmm. So I do get to do everything from here. That is also a blessing of the pandemic. Right. Learning that we can, we all don't have to be in office exactly. anymore. 
Uh, so that's worked out very well for me. I have been fortunate enough at Edge in the last two years to take their audience from 7 million to 10 million mm. in two years by mm. making changes and adjustments wow. and there's more adjustments and changes mm -hmm. coming, mm -hmm. which is great. So it's given me a new excitement and a new fervor and it's given me a new passion because believe me, at the end of Vital Voice, I pretty much was like, screw the community, I'm done with these mm. bitches, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was. And I literally, I even told my best friend, I was like, I'm never working in the gay community again. Not mm -hmm. doing it. Not worth mm -hmm. it. Not worth my time. Not worth my energy. I'm mm -hmm. treated like crap and I do everything I can for him. Yeah. Yeah. This has changed my perspective back to who I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe, maybe I am supposed to tell these stories. Right. Maybe that's what I'm put on this earth to do is to help change that narrative. Mm. Even when my own community makes me want to go, I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, and that tipping point, I think, is very important. So I would say then that's going to put you back to that, you know, December of 2019 period where everything closed and everything began anew. And what you've done with it and what you continue to do and the spirit in which you're doing it. Because there will be those people who will hear this and they'll be like, well, no, you have to go out and protest. I'm more like you in that regard. Obviously, you know, you're dealing with one community. I'm dealing with another. It's the same shit, just different flies, right? And sure. you always have these people who, of course, who are going to tell you there's only one way to do it. I believe it was Malcolm X who said that he never confused his methods with his objectives. And that I think is very important. And it's what you are living into. It's what people who are, I think, innovative and creative do. They look to solve the challenges by looking for the opportunities to approach it from a different point of view. And I celebrate that with you. And we're going to wrap up here, but I want to end with this. When I initially reached out to you about the conversation, I knew this is what it would be because uh -huh. you've come a long way. And this is an important lesson for anyone. Um, as I said, Darren and I don't talk every day. Darren and I don't text every day, but we know each other. We are concerned about each other's well-being. And throughout that time, we kind of connected Facebook messages here and there. You're going through some shit and I'd be like, hey, keep your head up, man, keep going. Yes, These are. types of engagements are important to simply do what everyone requires is to show that you are seen, you are heard, and you matter. Whether you were St. Louis Darren or Mexico Darren, you are all those things still. And I celebrate your joy and happiness in having found this in your life. I think it's awesome. Congratulations and more to come. I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. I know. I actually, you know, I was thinking about it, like, I, even here in Puerto Vallarta, which is like the LGBTQIA mecca of Latin America. Mm -hmm. I, I sit around here sometimes and I go, what can I do here? Mm -hmm. I live here. Mm -hmm. I love it here. I love the people here. Mm -hmm. But I think, how can I help change things? But in truth be told, to be honest, mm -hmm. even though Mexico is a heavily Catholic, religious ta city, a country, mm -hmm. My God, they are so much more accepting than the U.S. right now of my people. Okay. It baffles. I am like, we just had gay pride in May here. And yes, there are drag queens and people half naked in the parade and stuff. But family members from grandma to baby were out at the parade to mm -hmm. celebrate it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't this thing of like, mm, mm -hmm. they're trying to change us. Mm -hmm. It was more of like, well, that's for them. And we actually just came out because they look so colorful. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And that, my friend, is exactly why you make the difference is because you are bringing that type of perspective and allowing people to be people by showing them that people are people, right? Yeah. And that is something that is so necessary. There may be some time in the future where I get you back on here and we're talking about all the crap that we have to deal with with the LGBTQ plus community here in the States. I mean, I am... Let's just say that's another episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. For me, because I am completely turned upside down yeah. right now from yeah. what like is happening. And, and it's all these things, you know, across the board where we just tend to forget, you know, what we are asked to do is to love one another as we are loved. At the end of the day, I don't care whatever scripture you want to speak on. That's it right there. 
but we choose to do what we do. And, you know, there's an old saying there in that, you know, God created everything, but humans decided that they were in the position to decide which ones are the right ones. And that's the problem that we have, right? So we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to let those who will be inspired by your story and your example, take what they can and hopefully change their life so that if you're happening to listen to this, you can't see it. But if you're viewing this instead, the smile on this man's face, it tells you everything. I'm so glad you joined us today, Darren. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Charles. Have a beautiful, beautiful summer. Uh, well, I certainly hope so. <laughs>